guys, Sam here, and for today's video is about getting to know me. So I decided to make this video a Q&A video just for you guys to get a little more familiar with me. I to say is like almost um, kind of bringing myself into the YouTube world. So yeah, don't forget to, if you haven't already, like and subscribe down below. So let's get into the video! Okay, so what is my name? So my name is Samantha Aaron Schwed. So that's basically how I got my YouTube name. S E dot E dot It's S dot E dot Schwed. So a lot of people actually ask what my middle name is. And so my middle name is Aaron. Well Aaron is basically like a unisex name that can be used for both boy and girls, but my middle name is kind of spelled a little bit more differently. It's more like instead of it being A A R O N, mine is more on the fancier side, um, where it's spelled E R I E N N E. My mom is a huge book fan, and so she got both my first name and middle name from two different books, but I just don't remember which books. I remember she told me once, but I just don't remember which ones they are. Where do I live? So, I won't get into too many specific details, but I am both born and raised in Canada. Yes, so where we have freezing winters, maple syrup, and free healthcare. What is my background? So my background or ethnicity is that I'm half Asian and then half Caucasian. I know, surprise! I bet you would have never guessed that. So I am half Chinese and half Ukrainian. My mom is full Chinese and my dad is full Ukrainian. Well, that I know of at least. Number four. So what are my hobbies? I actually have a whole bunch of hobbies. Um, Either I am watching or playing sports, or I am doing something along the lines of the arts, such as like singing, dancing, or like painting and sculpting and stuff like that. I guess I consider myself both a jock and a drama geek, if that makes sense. So for the sports, I love playing softball, volleyball, archery, I love swimming, I used to do um, horseback riding and like equestrian, I really wish I can get back into that. But along on the other side with the arts, as a child I used to do a lot of visual arts. And so I was a very like hands-on person as you can tell right now. <laughs> but I love doing sculptures, um, landscapes, and stuff like that. But as I grew up, I started going along the lines of more of the fine arts. So like acting, singing, dancing, and all that jazz kind of stuff. I haven't taken any singing lessons or acting lessons and stuff. But I have done a lot of musical theater and have been in a lot of musical theater productions such as Into the Woods, Annie, Once on this Island, and much more. And as I said before, I also love to dance. Um, when I was younger, maybe about like uh, 8 or 10 years ago, or 8 to 10 years ago, um, I used to do ballet jazz as a kid. But I didn't think it really suited me as much, so I stopped doing it. But then recently, like a couple years ago, um, I've gotten back into dance just for fun. So now, uh, me and my friends uh, create like a small dance group called Scarlet Prism. But I'll get back into that later. What is my favorite genre of music? As you can tell from my background or my wall, I am not just a huge fan of American pop music, but also K-pop. K-pop is Korean pop music, which is from Korea, of course, <laughs> it's in the name. But a whole bunch of you guys might have heard some K-pop songs. Um, there's a group called BTS, which is getting really popular in North America right now, or even more just all around the world. Um, they did songs like Boy in Love with Halsey, Idol with Nicki Minaj. They also performed at BBMAs a couple years ago, and oh, um, Times Square um, in New York for New Year's Eve. But yeah, you might have heard of them. But other than BTS, I have a whole bunch of other groups I love and obsess over is Seventeen, which is them over there, The Boys, Red Velvet, Blackpink, and way more. As I said beforehand that um, I am in a group, like a dance group with my friends, we are actually a K-pop cover group. So we do cover dances of these groups. So yeah, we are Scarlet Prism K-Pop Dance Cover Group. How do I express myself? This one's gonna be a fun question. So, I usually like to express myself through my performances. As an actor and singer, I let my emotions go through while I'm doing my performances. That's why usually I can like cry on the spot and stuff like that. But also, physically through my appearances, I use a lot of colors to express myself. So as you can tell, my hair is blue. I hope you can see it through the camera. I hope 
hope it's showing. But yeah, I love dyeing my hair. I actually think I'm addicted to dyeing my hair. I have done a whole bunch of different colors and dyed my hair so many different ways. I've had like, I've had streaks in my hair, caramel highlights, I've dyed my hair pink, blue, purple, and stuff like that. So I actually started dyeing my hair in grade 8. Uh, where I had a nice big pink streak. I'll probably put a picture of me somewhere up here. But yeah, I just love expressing myself through my appearance because I happen to say, well, my friends would probably say, like they probably agree with me that I'm a fun, energetic, and very funny person. Um, I'm always that person that gets everyone else excited and energetic. <laughs> and energetic. Why did I create my YouTube channel? So I've actually wanted to start a channel for a while, but I just haven't had the time or the guts to do it. But recently, uh, my friends and I have been discussing about a trip that we're planning to do for next year, and my friends are like, why don't you vlog it and stuff like that, like our trip? And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. But I just thought that maybe just creating a, U a YouTube channel just for like a few videos of like where we're traveling isn't going to be all that exciting. There's no point to do it because I'm too broke to be going traveling like every like couple months. So yeah, so I decided why not start up now and have fun with it and just show my daily life. And now we're here. <laughs> Number nine. Ooh. <laughs> what is my most embarrassing time of my life? Well, I've actually had a lot of embarrassing times, but the one that I can remember the most was uh, first semester in grade 9. So, as a grade 9, we're a freshman, starting high school, very confused. Um, and so, I really wanted to kickstart my drama career, acting career, and stuff like that. So, I decided to go out and do um, the school play. I auditioned for the school play. And this one was called... Bad auditions by bad actors, yeah. So this play is about um, two people trying to get a Romeo and Juliet play together, but the people who are coming in with their auditions are really bad. But anyway, off topic, so back to my story. So I auditioned, and the audition piece for, for the play was the actual monologue or remake monologue of the balcony scene for Romeo and Juliet. It was either you were Juliet or you were Romeo. So I chose Juliet's scene, and it wasn't like the like our new time English, it was like the olden English. So I had to memorize that for the audition in like two weeks. And I don't know how, but till this day, I still remember the monologue. I don't know why or how, but as I say, I remember a lot of non-important things. But anyway, so I performed it, um, they liked me, and then I moved on to the second stage. So, well, not like the second stage, well, we chose all our actors and stuff, it was on the list in the bullet, like on a bulletin board outside the drama room. And so for the first rehearsal, um, the director who was the teacher didn't, the drama teacher didn't have like actual like actors set per each like character yet. So we did like a simple run through with each other. So it was more like, okay, can this person just, can person A play thing and thing and then person B play yada yada yada, person C play yada 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 until we go to the end of the list. So each person got about maybe two or three characters to read through. I had a character in the second half, um, I don't remember what his name was, but this guy was supposed to be a really good actor but was very insecure about himself where he always thought one simple little thing went wrong and he tried to jump off a cliff or something. But yeah. So I was reading through the lines, reading, reading, yada, yada. I was a little bit nervous because I was the only grade 9 in this whole thing. So I felt really special because I was the only grade 9 out of all the grade 10s, 11s, and 12s who made it to the play. So I didn't know anyone there. I was making a first impression because it's maybe around like end of September, beginning of October by now. And I'm like, okay, gotta make a good impression for my drama teacher and the rest of my cast. So I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading and stuff like that and it gets to a line. So I was supposed to say, wow, I'm such a dum-dum, I should just go and die in a well. And so, seems simple enough, right? Well, I think I got a little too emotionally attached with the character by reading this, and I was like, wow, I'm such a dum-dum! <laughs> wow, I'm such a dum-dum. From that, I stop reading, I look around, people look at me. And they burst out in laughter. I'm like, 
Oh my god, I just made, oh my god, I just embarrassed myself in front of my whole cast because I can't read. Because at this time we all got our scripts and stuff. So everyone had a script, they were reading along with us, but one person was reading out loud. So people knew that I made the mistake. And people just bursted out in laughter and I'm like, great, I love my first impression for everyone. I'm over here being quiet, sticking to myself, reading if I go along, and I say, da dum. Like, really? Ah! So, so yeah, I made a very interesting first impression for the rest of my cast and my drama teacher. Love Number that. Time. What is my favorite food? Ooh, okay. So I don't know about y'all, but I love food so flippin' much. So, so much. So my favorite food of all time, I know this sounds kind of weird, but it's watermelon. Yes. I love watermelon so, so, so much. I don't know if it's because I'm a summer baby, but I know as a kid, I've always loved my fruits and vegetables, and watermelon has just, has always been there for me. It just, it's really painful during the winter time, or like during an off season when watermelon isn't good, and I'm just like... But yeah. Okay. What is one place I would love to travel or visit? So, since I love the French language and that I'm actually, well, majoring in French, salut tout le monde. I would love to visit France. More, more so like Paris or any like major city in France because I'd love to practice my French skills, eat authentic French food, do sightseeing and stuff like that. Cats or dogs? So, I have to say that I'm more of a dog person. Not that I have anything against cats. I actually think they're super, super cute. But I'm just, I'm that person that's very energetic and I'd love to have like a companion or like a friend that's just as energetic and excited as I am so I can take them outside, go for walks and play catch and stuff like that. I know a lot of cats are like, they're indoor cats and stuff. So I feel like I just can't do as much. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff indoors, but it's just I'd rather be outside physically walking them and stuff like that. Oh, plus, um, I have a whole bunch of friends who own dogs and cats, and I have taken care or like cat or dog sat for both of them. And I found that dog sitting is, well, I prefer dog sitting over cat sitting. I thought it was more fun and amusing, in, in my opinion, at least. So what are my pet peeves? So I guess I have to say I have quite a few. Not like I'm a perfectionist or anything, but I just have quite a few pet peeves. So to start off, one of them. When people's um, strings, like on sweaters and hoodies, are not even. I don't know why. It just really, really bugs me. So, like, if it's my friends who have uneven strings, I will go up to them and I will pull them to make them even, no matter what it is. Even on my sweaters, even if I'm super, super lazy, just not in the mood, I will still make them even. Another huge aspect peeve of mine, oh, when people are chewing gum and they're like, No one needs to hear that. No one needs to hear all that saliva and nastiness going up in your mouth, okay? No one needs to hear that. So, please. Please, 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 please. Stop chewing like a cow. So, on the line of pets, do I have any pets? Yes, I do have one pet and I will go get him for you. Okay. See, hello to Hoshi. Oh, Hoshi's very camera shy. But yeah, this little guy, oh, he's so tired. So, oh, Hoshi, you got hair on you. That's my hair. Oh my goodness, my hair's all over you. Sorry, buddy, sorry, baby. So, this is Hoshi, my little hamster. He's my teddy bear hamster. So, I got Hoshi um, around December of last year. Yeah, so back then, we didn't fully know how old he is, but they said he was at least two or three months old. So yeah. So Hoshi is a teddy bear hamster, or also known as a short hair hamster. Yeah. So he's very, very energetic. Um, but right now, I just kind of woke him up to say, to say hello to you guys. Yeah, it's actually a very funny story of how I got Hoshi. My dad didn't like it very much, but my mom was for it, so I guess it's okay? I mean, I paid for it with my own money, so yeah. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yeah. So yeah, this is Hoshi, my cute little pet. He is my third hamster I have ever had. 
am. Is he such a cutie? Oh my goodness. Yeah, he is. As I said beforehand, one of my favorite K-pop groups, Seventeen, which is like up here, one of their members is named Hoshi. And Hoshi is known for being a very cute, fluffy little hamster or has the personality of a hamster. And he knows that very well to the point where he does like little signatures or little cartoon drawings of himself. He will put himself as a cute little hamster. Isn't that, isn't that so adorable? So how could I not name this little buddy Hoshi? Like, look at it. Also, fun fact, Hoshi means star in Japanese. Okay, well, say bye Hoshi. Say bye buddy. So, second last question. What is my most proudest moment in high school? So, I have to say, out of all my memories I remember in high school, my proudest moment would probably be very recent. So, for my final assignment, which we call our CU, or our culminating unit, for drama, we had to pitch a play that we found online, and the class would have to vote on which ones they wanted. We would vote on two different ones. So the one that I pitched was called The Nine Worst Breakups of All Time. And my play actually got chosen. I was actually very surprised about that. And so after we chose the plays, we had to decide who the director was gonna be. And so I was thinking like, should I? Cause I chose the play, I kinda know more about it and stuff. And, but I was like, I really like acting, you know? I really wanna make sure I get this like, the best highest mark I can possibly get. But then my friends convinced me saying, you're the one who chose this play. You're the one who knows everything about this. You already, you already said you have a vision on it and everything. You should totally do it. And so I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll do it. And so I was a director. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. The stressful downhill part. My teacher then tells me we only have two and a half weeks to get a full play done with acting, blocking, memorizing lines, lighting, sound, and costumes. What? What? That was a very stressful time. A lot of mental breakdowns, um, a lot of stressing out how to do things, and yeah. I had to do all the blocking for all my cast, all my actors. So blocking is basically all the specific movements that they're going to do on stage for when people are watching them. So I had to go through all my different scenes with that. And then plus, I only had eight actors. This play can consist of 12 to 37 actors. Because <sighs> we're near like the end of the semester. We had prom, we had graduation, prom cottage, and all that jazz. Okay, so a lot of people were missing from the days. So me taking my time to make sure that this play goes so well, I came the day after prom so I can learn how to do lighting. Yes, the director has to do their own lighting while the stage manager, who's the person in the back making sure everything goes smoothly on stage, is doing the sound. <laughs> By the end, people loved it. I was so happy when my cast was ready to perform the nine worst breakups of all time. I was so happy with the end result. I was so, so happy that I got so much done. I got costumes, lighting, sound, blocking done, making sure that everyone had their lines memorized, having choreography, all done in two and a half weeks. Okay, and finally, where do I see myself in 10 years? So hopefully I will be a teacher of some sort, more so for French as a second language or as a drama teacher. A lot of people, a lot of my friends actually said I, they can see me as a drama teacher. So I think that'd be kind of fun actually. But yeah, some sort in the teaching field, I really love teaching. And then hopefully by 10 years by now, I am married, hopefully. <laughs> So yeah, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys learned a lot about me and I hope you guys had an awesome time watching this video. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe down below and if you want, comment what kind of videos you want to see next. Bye guys, until next time.